How to say no, without feeling guilty. Do you wonder how to say no, and not feel bad about it? To answer this question, you must first understand why people feel bad when they turn someone down. Saying no may feel aggressive, like you are rejecting the person. And most people do not want to be an aggressor. There is a negative connotation to it. Or, they may feel like the bad guy, or girl. They may feel they're letting the person down, and feel guilty. Or, they may even feel they won't be liked, or will be perceived as uncaring and unhelpful. As a result, people usually choose the path of least potential conflict, and comply with others. If people do say no, they usually do it in ineffective ways that come with an excuse. For example, they might say, I would like to help but I am really busy. The problem with this approach is that it gives the other person an opportunity to continue to ask. He or she feels there is an opening. For example, since you are busy this week, how about next week? Most other times, your fear for saying no is because you notice the no. You remember the times when you said no, and someone got angry. The anger still sticks in your memory like billboards made of neon. But the truth is that people say no to requests all the time, and suffer no ill consequences. The sea doesn't turn to blood, and frogs don't fall from the sky. The requester just shrugs, and says, OK. But you forgot all those too easily, and train your attention on the 0.02% of the time, when the other person blew up, and stormed away, never to speak to you again. So, the starting point is to watch your interactions, and the interactions of others more closely. Notice all the times no doesn't cause any problems, and try to develop a more realistic perspective. Gain a little perspective by becoming aware of how often people around you say no to each other from day to day. When you really pay attention, you will find that it happens all the time, and in most cases, it is not a big deal. Keep that in mind when it is your turn to say no, in similar situations, and when someone is saying it to you. Watch how others handle these situations effectively. When you are polite, and empathetic, it is unlikely that someone is going to get furious with you. You need to develop good boundaries, and have an idea of what you are comfortable with, and what you are not, ahead of time, so that decisions are easier for you, and you are not as tempted to cave. Saying no comfortably, and without guilt, requires you to really think about what you stand for, why you are saying no, and what you are making room for. As you learn to eliminate unwanted obligations from your life, embrace your priorities, and focus on what you want more. For example, time with the family, or, money for an important project, or cause. With this, you feel more justified saying no, in order to pursue those goals. Here are other ways you can effectively say no, without feeling guilty. 1 say it. Don't beat around the bush, or offer weak excuses, or hern, and haw. This only provides an opening for the other person. Don't delay, or stall either. Provides a brief explanation if you feel you need to. However, don't feel compelled. The less said, the better. 2. Be assertive, and courteous. You might say, I am sorry, I can't right now, but will let you know when, and if I can. This approach is polite, and puts you in a position of power by changing the dynamic. You are taking charge, telling people you will let them know when, and if you can. Another example is, I appreciate you asking me for help, but I am stretched too thin right now, to devote the time to be of quality help to you. Three. Understand people's tactics. Many people and organizations use manipulation techniques, whether knowingly or not. For example, 
Think about when you get a solicitation for a donation to a charity, and there are forced options like, would you like to donate $10, $20, $30, or X amount? Another tactic is, most people donate $20, so, how much would you like to donate? This relies on social pressure technique. When you understand these manipulation techniques, you will be able to apply assertive response, to still decline if you don't want to give in, rather than to accept it because they had told you that others have donated, to make you feel awkward, for not donating. 4. Set Boundaries People sometimes have a hard time saying no, because they haven't taken the time to evaluate their relationships, and understand their role within the relationship. When you truly understand the dynamic, and your role, you won't feel as worried about the consequences of saying no. You will realize that your relationship is solid, and can withstand your saying no. 5. Put the question back to the person asking. This is highly effective in a work situation. Let's say, a supervisor is asking you to take on several tasks more than you can handle. You might say, I am happy to do X, Y, and Z. However, I would need three weeks, rather than two, to do a good job. How would you like me to prioritize them? With this, you can work out the solution with the person or, make the person realize by themselves that the task they requested is not realistic to be done within the expected time. 6. Be firm. If someone can't accept your no, then you know the person is probably not a true friend, or doesn't respect you. Stand firm, and don't feel compelled to give in, just because that person is uncomfortable. 7. Be selfish. Put your needs first. Not those of the person asking you for something. If you prioritize that person's needs over yours, you will find out that your productivity will suffer, and resentment will mount. Perhaps we can learn from Warren Buffett, who said, The difference between successful people, and very successful people, is that very successful people say no to almost everything. 8. Buy time. You must not respond to request immediately. So, when you feel pressured for a yes, don't give the yes. Relieve the pressure, and ask for time. This will allow you to calm down, and properly evaluate whether you really want to agree, or not. In order to break your habit of giving an automatic yes response to requests from others, you need to delay your answer in order to think through your options carefully. The old adage to think before you speak, or agree, is a wise psychological advice. Once you learn to insert time between an invitation, demand, or request, and your reply, your sense of control will immediately increase. Best way to do this is to memorize any two of these following phrases, and make them your default response to any request. I need to check my calendar, I will get back to you. Let me check with my husband, or wife, or partner, to see if we are free that day. I have got to think about that, I will let you know. I will have to call you back in a few minutes. Don't turn them into questions. They are statements, and use a pleasant but assertive tone. 9. Have a policy. We are back to the issue of boundaries. When you live by clear principles, it is easier to make decisions, and people are more likely to respect your responses. Also, there is less chance of someone feeling personally rejected, if it is clear that this is a rule you live by, consistently. Suppose a friend asks for a loan you don't want to extend. Utter the phrase. Sorry, I have a policy about not lending money. With this, your refusal will sound less personal. In all kinds of situations, invoking a policy, adds weight, and seriousness, when you need to say no. 
it implies that you have given the matter considerable thought on a previous occasion, and learned from experience, that what the person is requesting is unwise. When you turn down an invitation by saying, sorry, I can't come. It is our policy to have dinner together as a family every Friday night. It lets the other person know that your family ritual is carved in stone. But every rule has exceptions. And persistent people will seek to find the exceptions by nagging you with why their request is special, unique, and covered in glitter. So, how do you deal with people who don't take no for an answer? The next point has the answer. 10. Be a broken record. First thing to do is to say you can't help them. The second thing to do is to repeat the first thing. For example, them. Can you help me bury this body? You. Sorry, I can't. Them. What if we bury it tomorrow? Are you available then? You. Sorry, I can't. Them. I will let you use the fancy shovel. You. Sorry, I can't. This exercise teaches you about persistence, and doesn't allow people to bargain, because you just keep repeating your denial, not responding to their new angles, or reasoning. Don't get angry, or raise your voice. Just calmly repeat yourself until the other person is utterly exhausted. Be careful not to respond directly, or to engage in the content of the requester's resisting attempts. If you stay on your simple message, the requester will not succeed in pressuring you to respond. It is important that you do not engage in any negotiation. This is new territory for you. Don't allow yourself to be drawn into a bargaining posture, where there is a chance that your old people-pleasing habits will take over and you will find yourself saying yes, when you want to say something else. However, the broken record technique is quite powerful with salespeople, but a bit cold for close relationships. 11. Use a relational account. Wharton professor, Adam Grant, pulls this method from a research. It involves referencing your commitment to other people when declining the focal person. Studies by Hannah O'Reilly Bowles, and Linda Babcock, reveals that when we offer relational account for going against the norm, we are viewed more favorable, as we preserve our image, as giving, and caring. So, how do you do this? Your response should take the structure of, if I helped you, I would be letting others down. When Adam gets mentoring requests that he needs to say no to, he replies. Students are my top priority professionally. And since I teach more than 300 students per year, I don't have the bandwidth to take on additional mentoring. But what if you don't want to give a flat no? You want to help but can't commit to the specifics of what they are asking for. Here is what to do in the next point. 12. Make a counter offer. It worth to support a charity that is supporting a good cause you believe in. But if they want you to donate $1,000, which you don't want, you can respond by saying, Um, no way. But I can give you $10. If a friend asks you to spend four hours volunteering at an event, you might respond by saying that you can't do four hours, but you can spend one, or two. Be careful not to fall into the trap of using this option too often, or too much. You should reserve the count to offer for situations where you really do not wish to give a definitive no. Your reason for not saying a flat no should be because complying with the request is really something you want to do. Or, at least, wouldn't mind doing. But you need to modify the demand to meet your conditions, and best interests. And you can make a counter offer to almost any request by offering someone a different resource, or the name of someone else who might help. Again, Wharton professor, Adam Grant provides some useful examples. I am not qualified to do what you are asking, but here is something else. 
or, this isn't in my wheelhouse, but I know someone who might be helpful. Alright. Now you have learned a lot of techniques on how to say no, without feeling guilty. You are getting better at this already. If you consider what you have learned helpful, hit the like button. And also share it with others, by sharing this video. Thank you for watching.